Well, when it rains, it pours. It's Monday, the 30th of September. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And one thing I've learned over years of uh, Air Force flying in various squadrons is once you're in the barrel, the barrel of bad news in the squadron, you remain in the barrel until somebody else screws up equally or more. Unfortunately, for the case of Boeing and the 737, the 737 series of aircraft remains in the news. And today, that's what we want to discuss is two different events that have hit the mainstream media. One is the loss of a, or the opening of a cowling, a left engine cowling on takeoff out of Denver, and also the controversy about the cracks found in the pickle fork assembly that attaches the rear spar center section to the fuselage of the 737NG series of aircraft, aircraft that were being brought back into the shop for conversion to freighter aircraft when these cracks were found. We're going to go into a detailed discussion on that today. I haven't got a new high-tech whiteboard where we can break down the structure of the 737 and discuss exactly where and what these pickle forks are and what they do. We'll be taking that uh, content, the detailed technical content, on over to Patreon today to avoid the vagaries of the YouTube demonetization program. So here on the free side of YouTube, we're just going to be introducing the subject. Speaking of rain, here in Northern California, we've got another good uh, half inch of rain, half inch to three quarters of an inch of rain from this latest storm. Some low snow levels down to 5,000 feet. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of the Paradise Fire, the so-called campfire here in Northern California. We're at this time last year, we had no rain at all, and that set the stage for the, one of the most devastating wildfires in this country's history. As a result of that devastating wildfire, PG&E, which has been sued out of business right into bankruptcy, has adopted a policy of shutting down the power anytime the strong winds, strong wind events pick up in red flag super dry conditions. Last week we had a red flag situation upon us here locally where winds were predicted to pick up substantially out of the north and the east, and so PG&E went down and shut down the power to over 50,000 customers throughout the foothills here of Northern California. Well, the winds never uh, amounted to much. And talk about the ramifications of unintended consequences. No less than three generator started fires were reported here in Nevada County as a result of the PG&E power outage, which lasted for nearly 24 hours. So let's go inside the hangar and talk more about the 737. We'll talk about the cowling departure and the 737NG pickle fork rear spar attach fittings and their associated cracks. We'll also discuss about airworthiness directives, emergency airworthiness directives, and notices of proposed rulemaking. How service difficulties and defects become actionable items and required maintenance items to be fixed. First up, the opening of the fan cowl door on United Airlines flight 292 departing Sunday morning about 7.30 in the morning from Denver on a flight to Orlando only made it to about 10,000 feet before successfully returning and landing uneventfully back at Denver. It seems that we were just talking about this nine months ago on a Frontier Airlines Airbus aircraft had another cowling open up and this is unfortunately a fairly common occurrence. We'll talk about why here in a second. 737 shares the same engine as many of the Airbus A320 series of aircraft. That's the CFM56 engine. That's that engine that's built in together 
by both GE General Electric here in the States and Sa Safran over in France. The engines are assembled both here in the States and over in France. A very common engine, a very popular, in fact the most popular engine in commercial aviation today. The cowlings around these engines are in two parts. The front half of the cowling is the cowl fan section. The aft part of the cowling is the thrust reverser door section. Now the section that opened up on United Airlines is the fan cowl door and it's the lighter of the two sections weighing in at only about 88 pounds or so. That cowling door has three latches on the bottom. Those three latches should be triple checked before every takeoff. Usually there's two checks done by maintenance and then finally it's the first officer's job to bend down there and check those latches are locked. Unfortunately on the 737, this is the 800 series, and even on the Airbus, those latches are very low under the engine and you got to really stoop down there to see and verify that those three latches are closed. And it being the first flight of the day, things get rushed, maybe some maintenance folks got moved around, maybe it was shift change, the old classic example, or some folks got pulled off to do something else. Somebody had to pop open the cowl for one reason or another, didn't come back and relatch those cowls, that's probably what happened. It's probably not the latches failing themselves, but no doubt a human factors situation where somebody simply forgot to close the latches and somebody else forgot or neglected to verify that those latches were closed. Here's United Flights 292 after its return to Denver. And you can see all three latches on the bent fan cowl door in the open position. It looks like the entire cowling and latches remained on the aircraft. In this opened up section, you can also see the fan case accessories located on the exterior of the fan case underneath the cowling. Even though this next picture is an Airbus, but it's the same engine, the CFM56, you can see the difference between the lighter weight fan cowl door cowling versus the thrust reverser door cowling, a much heavier cowling, which has to be hydraulically opened when servicing on the ground. The fan cowl, you can just open up by hand. And here's a screenshot shot by Bobby Lewis of the United Airlines Flight 292 cowling flapping in the breeze with the cowl latches open and attached. Because this was the fan cowl door latch, when that opens up, it doesn't, you, the engine does not lose any thrust. The high bypass turbofan casing is still underneath there. And so that air is still efficiently moving through the engine. However, that popped open cowling produces a lot of drag and can introduce some unusual handling characteristics for the pilots if that big old cowl door is still sitting there flapping in the breeze. The bigger hazard of course is if that door departs the aircraft and impacts the wing or the horizontal or vertical stabilizer causing structural damage. Now on the 737 or the Airbus or any of these uh, single aisle airliner type aircraft there's no cameras on board the aircraft to help the crew up front see what's going on with the engines behind them. As the pilot, you can just barely see the engine. If you really turn around hard in the cockpit and look around to see the engine, you can, you can really only see the tip of the wings from the front of the cockpit in a 737. By the way, the Boeing 777 does have cameras. They've got three cameras, and two of the cameras on the Boeing 777 are mounted on the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer and look forward into towards the engines, and you can see exactly what's going on with the engines in a Boeing 777. But in the case of a narrow body aircraft, it's probably gonna be that passenger, like in this case, uh, Bobby, uh, the, the passenger on the 737, noticing something out of his window, hitting the uh, flight attendant call button, uh, calling a flight attendant over, pointing to the open cowl and getting her attention, and she'll go notify the crew and verify what's going on with the aircraft. At that point, the crew should declare the emergency and come on back in for a precautionary or emergency landing, as the case may be. And they usually will leave the engine running, because if it's just the fan cowl door, you're not losing any thrust out of the engine. Okay, now on to pickle forks, and we're going to move this discussion on over to Patreon for a detailed discussion of the pickle fork structure in the 737NG aircraft. See you there.